Okay, so uh, now we're going to be solving for equilibrium prices when uh, firms are selling differentiated products and setting prices. And we often associate with this with a uh, Joseph Bertrand, uh, Bertrand competition in differentiated products. And this is from my microeconomics textbook, and I'm Richard Friedberg. Okay, so to make uh, things simple, uh, in this illustration, we're focusing on two firms. Um, could be many, but we're having two here. We call them blue and red. So they're selling differentiated products. Could be different bicycles, different types of beers, different sodas, uh, different snowboards, what have you. So similar products, but that differ in, in some dimensions. Uh, could even be just a color. Uh, so quantity for the blue product, QB. What? Well, it's equal to 85 minus PB. So the own price, higher prices for, for the blue product means that blue is selling less. But depends, depends positively on the price of a competing product, PR, uh, the red product. So higher prices of a competing product means that blue is selling more. Okay. So that's one differentiated product. Then the other, QR. For simplicity here, we're assuming that it's just symmetric, <clears throat> but there's nothing in the Bertrand competition per case per se that, that um, um, requires this. Um, so that as well depends negatively on its own price and positively on the price of the competing product. Okay, we assume that marginal cost for both firms equals 11. So each unit costs um, uh, 11 to produce. Now remember, it's the quantity is given by this full full um, expression. So so the total cost, if we're saying that fixed costs are, are zero, the total cost would be given by this whole animal times 11. Okay. Firms, um, we're assuming that they want to maximize profits. So uh, putting ourselves in the shoes of blue first maximizes profits uh, by choosing price now. So in Cournot, it shows quantity. Here it's choosing price. What's, um, what, what are profits? Well, they're uh, the quantity. And we are using that the quantity here, the quantity that depends on the price. So 85 minus PB plus PR divided by 2 times PB. So that gives revenue. Quantity. B times the price of B. We need to deduct the cost as well. Um, so that's this whole animal times 11. So we're writing that like this to have it compact. Okay. So as usual in microeconomics, at least at this level, um, the profit function, I think of that as a, as, a, as a hill, and we use calculus to find the top of the hill. So <clears throat> The first order condition for profit maximization, so finding the point where the slope of the profit function equals zero, we do that by differentiating this profit function with respect to PB. <clears throat> and we could here multiply in, but you know, let's let's do that. We've done that enough times now, so we, we can do that fairly quickly. So 85 times PB differentiated with respect to PB is 85 minus PB squared differentiated with respect to PB becomes minus two PB. Uh, and here comes the same trick that we used in Cournot and that John Nash uh, taught us about. Um, you know, we could have different conjectures if we're the blue firm about how red would be responding to changes in my price, different guesses, etc. Just as in the case of Cournot, we leave that for later, okay? We're saying, okay, now when blue is maximizing its profits, it's just treating the price of the red firm as a constant. It's interested in finding the best response function to that red price, but you know, we're, we're, uh, we're gonna be putting ourselves in uh, the red firm's shoes later and see you know, what would that firm do to optimize its, its profits. But now when we're differentiating, we're treating it as a constant. So, um, PR times PB divided by two 
differentiated with respect to PB becomes just PR over two, okay? And then we need to remember the 11 here. <clears throat> the PB only comes in here. So minus PB times minus 11 becomes 11 PB. Differentiate that with respect to PB becomes 11. So plus 11, that is all equal to zero. Okay. So now we want to find the best response, the best price that firm blue can set and how that relates to the price that red is setting. Okay. So we're solving for, for PB here. So move that over to the other side and divide by two. So that gives us PB equals 85 plus 11. So that's 96 divided by two, right? Plus PR, need to keep track of that. That was divided by two. And now we're dividing by two again to get the uh, PB on its own. So that becomes divided by four. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the best response function. Those are the um, the optimal price for firm B as a function of the optimal price for um, firm, um, firm R. Okay, so we can draw that. We have PB on the vertical axis, PR on the horizontal, and um, we have the best response function or reaction function is another term that we sometimes use. So this is the best response function for blue. It's drawing this, so 96 over two, that's 48, and then has an upward slope of uh, one four. So the higher price that blue's competitor is setting, the higher will the price for blue be, okay? So that's, this um, makes sense intuitively. And similarly, if <clears throat> red were to lower its price, blue would be uh, also countering by by uh, or responding by lowering its price as well. Okay, so uh, let's move over to red. So its profit maximization problem would be exactly symmetric. So we'll see maximus by, by then, by doing what? By choosing PA. So 85 minus, oh, PR, sorry, as in red, PR plus PB over two times PR minus 11 like that. <clears throat> so it's exactly symmetric here. So let's uh, fast forward a bit and note that if it's symmetric, its best response function will be given by PR equals 48 <clears throat> uh, plus PB over four. Okay, we want to illustrate that as well. So just as in the case of Cournot, we want to draw it in this, this diagram, but we have PR on the left-hand side. We want to have PB on the left-hand side. So move over the 48 and multiply by uh, four, which means that we have PB equals to um, four times 48. Not gonna do that in my head right now. Uh, plus um, PR times four, okay? And that should be uh, should be a little minus sign there since we moved it over from, from the other side. Okay, so uh, we can draw that as well. So the intercept is gonna be way down here, minus side, and then it's coming up like this with a slope of four. And that's the best response function for red. Okay, so uh, the equilibrium prices are gonna be just as in the case of Cournot where the best response functions intersect. So PR star here and PB star here. So uh, let's find those. Before we uh, do that, let's just clean up a little bit here. I 
actually take that away as well. So we're, we're seeing what we're doing here. Um, so uh, to solve that, we have um, two equations, two best response functions, and two unknowns, price of blue and the price of the red. Okay, so uh, we can solve by inserting what we know about the red price um, into uh, blue's best response function. So let's let's do that, or vice versa. We could do could do it uh, that way around, of course. So here, PB equals what? Ninety six over two. We said this forty eight plus. And now we're inserting the PR, so divided by four, so we multiply by one over four. So 48 here plus PB over four, like that. Okay, so that's um, PB equals to 48 plus 48 divided by four, it's uh, 12, plus, and here PB, divided by four, multiplied by one fourth, so divided by 16, okay? So move PB here over to this side, so we have PB times one minus one over 16, becomes minus because we're shifting sides, uh, and that's equal to 60, which is 48 plus 12, need to, uh, Clean a bit as well again. Okay, um, so we have PB one is equal to uh, sixteen over sixteen, right? So sixteen minus one over sixteen equals sixty, or PB equals sixteen over fifteen times sixty. And that's equal to 64, OK? And we could plug that 64 into uh, red's best response function to get PR. Or we could, in this case, note by symmetry that they're going to be the same. So the price for red is also going to be 64. Will you still love me when I'm 64? OK?